Many of you are telling me I need to be running my parting tool faster and pushing it harder, which is of course exactly the opposite of the advice you normally get for a small lathe. But this sure isn't working, so let's give it a try. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. You may have seen me struggling in previous videos to part off in my small benchtop lathe. I've exploded many parting blades over the years, both the high-speed steel and carbide variety, and without access to the Elvin Smiths of Rivendell, that gets expensive fast. Mounting a solid tool post riser on the lathe did help a little, but it's still a struggle, and I usually end up jamming the tool and stopping the lathe and then just giving up and using the bandsaw. Now, everything I have ever seen on the internet about parting on a small lathe says that the key to success is to hone the blade to a keen edge, set it on center or slightly below, run the lathe as slowly as possible, and maintain light, even pressure. But after my last video, a bunch of you told me that I need to be running the lathe faster and pushing the tool harder. Well, what I'm doing certainly isn't working, so let's try it. What's the worst that can happen? This is the parting tool that I've been using. This is an A-size multi-fix tool holder with a 26 millimeter high blade. The blade's steel and then it has a self-grip carbide insert forced into it. The insert itself is two millimeters in width and that really is about the widest parting tool that I would really want to run on a small lathe like mine. These are the inserts, they're GTN2. I believe these are C5 or C6 grade, though I don't have good data on that. You can see there's some cutting geometry in the top of the insert that is uh, intended to cause the sides of the chip to kind of roll in a little bit. So the chip will be narrower than the slot, which is good if you want the chip to come out of the slot. You can see the kind of chip breaker geometry on the top there that'll cause the chips to curl and hopefully break, but at least exit the slot in the part that you're parting. Now, because these are titanium nitride coated, they're gonna have a little bit of a rounded edge on them. And I have been using a diamond lap to come in and hone that to a razor sharp edge, just like you would with high speed steel to try to reduce the cutting forces and get a better, smoother cut on my small lathe and also so I can take a shallower depth of cut. And that really has helped a lot, but it's still not enough. This is the parting tool that I was using previously when I had an AXA tool post on the lathe. This is just a high speed steel blade that you grind off and resharpen as you use it. And you know, this works okay. You can see it's got that same cup geometry on the top. And again, with this one, you want a really razor sharp edge and then you run it really slow and scrape off just a little material at a time. This one's a little narrower, 1.62 millimeters. I think that's about a 16th of an inch. And this worked okay, you have to take it pretty slow, and of course as you extend the blade out, the center height changes, and of course I don't have an AXA tool post on my lathe anymore. This is a clip from my previous video that generated all of the comments about my parting tool. This is mild steel, and this is about a two inch or 50 millimeter diameter part, and I'm just, just trying to part it off. I have the carbide insert honed to a very sharp edge, you can see I'm trying different speeds. That was chattering pretty bad, so I've got it nice and slow now. Get through the chatter and it finally starts cutting and making a chip. Now I'm turning the hand wheel with my hand. I'm not holding the crank. I'm actually twisting the hand wheel very gently so I can control the depth of cut. So I can take just a foil thin cut. And even that occasionally just grabs. Now the first time here, I didn't actually destroy the insert, so I backed up, tried it again. I've been trying some different speeds, and I just fought and fought and fought this thing, making very little progress. And eventually it jammed, and this time it actually chipped the insert. And honestly, if I got a new one and kept going, I'm pretty sure I would have destroyed the parting blade as well. So hacksaw is the next best thing. Actually, that's not true. The bandsaw is the next best thing, but the hacksaw shot here gives you an idea how far I made it, which is not very far. And I finally just gave up and took this to the bandsaw. Well, you're all caught up now. I think there's nothing left to do but to try this. This is a piece of 1018 mild steel that I found in my scrap drawer. This is about an inch in diameter, and we'll get this chucked up in the lathe. This has got some previous cuts on it. 
doesn't look concentric to me. So I'm going to take a cleanup pass here and just make sure that it's nice and clean and consistent, has a nice clean surface and it's running concentric. This will bring it down to about 25 millimeters in diameter. Got the parting blade ready to go. There's a brand new insert in there. It has the factory edge. I did not hone this one. We're just going to run it stock. I've been told that I need to run this about 100 meters a minute, which is about 1,000 RPM on a one-inch part. Now, this is what I normally do. This is 100, 150 RPM on a part this size, and I take it super, super slow. But we're going to run this one at 1,000, even though everything in my brain is screaming at me not to do this. It's going to chatter. It's going to grab. It's going to break. It's going to explode. I am wearing eye protection, however. And the other thing that you've all been telling me is do not stop. Get in, start the cut, and just plow like heck. So that's what we're going to do. My heart's racing. Got my hand on the dial, and here we go. And that is probably the quietest parting cut I've ever heard. Uh, it's starting to sound a little crunchy once we get to the center. Some of that could be the chips trying to exit. Some of it's the slower surface speed. I might not be doing myself any favors by slowing down there in the middle. Let's take another cut and see if we can repeat that. Let me get you a different angle so you can see what I'm doing on the crank here. And I am just winding it in. If I had an auto cross feed, I would be using that, but I just start cranking. It's way faster than I want to do. My brain is screaming at me, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But it's, it's working. Let's try it again. That is clean. A little bit of a growling sound when I get to the center. I think that's chips trying to get out in combination with the slower surface speed because the diameter is smaller. But that worked. Wow. Tool looks okay. Edge isn't chipped. Just a little bit of wear in the titanium nitride or maybe steel wiped off on the titanium nitride coating. And that surface feels really good. You can see some inconsistencies in the surface finish there, maybe from the speed differences, maybe from how much pressure I was putting on it, maybe from deflection, I'm not sure. And, but while you can see that, you can't, you can't really feel anything. I can't believe that worked. Wow, you learn something new from the comments every day. A one inch test bar is one thing, but let's try a larger part like what I was attempting in the last video. This is also 1018 mild steel from my scrap bin, and this is a little bit over two inches, maybe two and a quarter. This one's got a neural on it and some other stuff, and wow, that's not concentric at all. Let's go ahead and turn this down and make it concentric and smooth as well. Do not like that chip. And we'll face it off, and the part that I was attempting to part off last time had a large hole board in the center, so we'll go ahead and drill this out so that we have something very similar, just to replicate that failure as much as possible, though hopefully not the failure part. Got the parting tool back in, it's the same insert we used last time, only this time we're gonna run it about 500 RPM, that should give us about 100 meters a minute on a two inch part, give or take. Should be about the same surface speed, move the tailstock over so I have something to rest my brush arm on, and see what happens. I'm holding my breath, which is probably a good thing considering all the smoke I'm generating here. And that just went straight through too. That is just crazy to me to be running this hard and fast in a small lathe like this. But it's working, you can't argue with that. Now, you can see as I make these cuts, there's some pulsing in the hand wheel, and I count about eight pulses per second, which is about 500 RPM. And I think that's because this chuck is not balanced correctly, and there's some, some changes in the tool pressure with every revolution. I think that's what you're seeing there in the hand wheel. I certainly don't notice that when I'm running with, uh, with a collet chuck. 
And I didn't notice it on the one inch diameter bar either. Make a third cut here just to make sure that this really is consistent and repeatable. And yeah, it is. I just cannot believe how smoothly this is going. Well, to all of you and my friend Phil from Almost Machining who talked to me afterwards and suggested this, thank you. Uh, I had no idea that this would even be possible. But sure enough, it is. Let me deburr this. It's going to go back in the, in the stock drawer and I don't want to have sharp edges on it. Let's see what the surface finish is like on this. Okay, that was probably tighter than it needed to be. I was nervous. My heart was racing. I over-tightened the chuck. You can see the chatter down there in the bottom from the boring bar, but that's a nice, smooth surface, just like I got on the one-inch part. That looks really good. I've also got a slice here. This is one of the slices that we cut off. You can see the both sides of that look pretty good, so the parting tools doing pretty well on both sides. That would be perfectly acceptable for many parts without any further processing. In fact, this side is super shiny. Now I know that the steel's just smeared rather than being cut cleanly because the tool's rounded and not sharp, but I'm still impressed by that. Well, I think that's it, though. After seeing that smoke, there is one thing I want to try. That was terrifying, but it worked. Everything in me wanted to slow it down because I'm expecting the tool to jam and it seems like the faster it's going, the worse that'll be. But in reality, if the tool does jam at those higher speeds, it's not gonna even stop the lathe. It's just gonna go away instantly and that's not gonna cost me any more than the slow speed grabs that I've had so many times. Is this how you should do it on your lathe? Well, that's up to you. I'm convinced there are lots of different ways to be successful here, including the upside down parting tools that are so popular in the model engineering world. For me, I'm gonna keep trying this and I'm gonna keep wearing eye protection. Thank you for watching.